Microvision technical analysis, fundamental statistics, along with reviewing my current positions and the price charts. Starting off with the price action, what do we have here today, boys? We do not have another bull pennant. Uh, unfortunately, it would be nice if I could make three videos in a row with three bull pennants, but this time we do have a cup and a handle for Microvision. Now, on the other two charts, we have a little bit not as clear as this one, obviously. That's why I wouldn't say it, but the, the other charts have a little bit of a cup and handle as well. The only thing that invalidates this uh, cup and handle a little bit is that this part of the sell-off was just because of the market. Uh, and that is, you know, that that means it's likely that we're not actually likely to see, you know, uh, the price target actually come to fruition, which we will be drawing up for you. So you can exactly see how I draw up a price target based on a cup and handle. Uh, but that does invalidate this cup and handle a little bit, in my opinion. But we do have a pretty textbook handle here. And the cup is pretty textbook as well, except this, uh, this second high here is not quite... Uh, touching exactly, but I mean, it's good enough. Uh, th th that's fine, honestly. But let me go ahead and show you how we go ahead and actually measure this price target here. We go to the top area where the two highs uh, were hit, and then we go to the bottom and measure that distance. And then at the point of the breakout, that's where now it's not, you know, it's not exactly clear. You know, you can put it here, you can put it here, you can put it here. Okay, to just be conservative and just be as fair and as uh, transparent as we can be, we're just going to put it right in the middle. Uh, the price target based on this cup and handle chart pattern slash formation is going to be 25.35. That is the price target. Now, I want to be clear. I didn't touch on this in the last video as much as I should have. These price targets are not for sure. They are never for sure, and these price targets do not always happen in a an hour after the breakout, right? As you can see, we're in the four hourly chart here, and we do have two four hourly closes. If I move that a little bit, we have two four hourly closes above this descending resistance level, signaling to me a confirmed breakout. But of course, some of this was in the after hours, so you know, not a ton of volume. I like, look at this, look at this last candle here, right? There's, there's literally no volume there, right? So, you know, uh, this is not a super surefire breakout, but I would still call this, in my opinion, a confirmed breakout, especially considering we did get rejected uh, roughly in this little Fibonacci retracement level, 38.2% re re retracement level, roughly. And then we came down, pretty much validated this. We actually did. Okay, we did. Now that I zoom out, I can see it perfectly. We actually validated this descending level of resistance, now turned support since the breakout. And that we actually validated that perfectly. So that does uh, verify a little more and give a little credibility to this as an actual breakout. Now, do I think this is going to come to fruition? In my opinion, this will undoubtedly come to fruition if two things. We don't get any insane, unrealistic, in my opinion, crazy negative news catalysts. Um, and the second condition is that if the NASDAQ can just go flat or go up. Or go a little bit down. If Nasdaq barely goes down, then Microvision still has a chance to do well. But if Nasdaq bleeds, you know, there's nothing we can do. I mean, sh long term, yeah, Microvision is going to do great, in my opinion. There's almost no doubt of that. Or at least in any play that you do a fair amount of due diligence and you hold for a year, hold for five months, you're going to be looking good as long as it's not another Great Depression or a bear market starting in five years, which is very unlikely, in my opinion, and in most people's opinion, that's fairly orthodox opinion. Um, if that means if that if that validates that and verifies that any more for you, but in my opinion, this will uh, hit the price target within the next couple of weeks. In my opinion, now of course that's an insane price target, but that is you know you know what let me let me revise that. I don't I don't know if we'll necessarily hit this. $25, but what I will say is that we'll definitely get a strong break to the upside. I don't know if we're going to exactly hit that price target, but if the NASDAQ goes up, uh, yeah, we're going to be very likely to hit that in the next couple of weeks, especially if we get back to all-time highs. Um, but And remember, this, this stock is very heavily correlated, very heavily correlated with the NASDAQ index. So be aware that you know the NASDAQ goes down, our overlords decide to punish us, we're going to die. It's death, it's destruction, it's Sauron coming down from Mordor to grab Frodo and you and give you a falling knife and, you know, by the dip, keeps dipping. Yeah, that, yeah, unfortunately, the NASDAQ does have the chance to say that. But guess what the guess what the, so, the solution to that is? You guessed it, diamond hands, diamond hands. That's what you got to have if you're worried about uh, a falling knife. <laughs> but guys, let's look at some other indicators. Let's go to the daily. 
Bollinger Bands. Let's actually do the Bollinger Bands first. Let's shake it up. Bollinger Bands first. All right, middle Bollinger Bands trading at 1608. We're currently trading a little above that, 1735. What does this mean? This is actually slightly bullish in my opinion. This means that, yes, we're going to be seeing some polling and almost like a magnetized pull, if you will, if you can understand what I mean. Not literally. Okay, stay with me. Don't think I mean literally a magnetized pull as far as the charts. Please don't do that. But we are going to be seeing a little bit of a pull. Remember, the price action wants to stay in equilibrium, uh, if you know what I mean, with this with this uh, middle Bollinger Band moving average. And of course, you can change the settings. Mine is set to 21 and 3 as far as the length and width. Uh, and you can change and get, and get fairly you know similar but a little bit different results uh, as far as where it's actually at. But guys, why it's slightly bullish in my opinion, you may be wondering, is because if we see a pullback, guess what these bands act as? You guess this support everything, every line. But you know, you can you can do a thousand lines. You can draw up a thousand indicators. You can do, you can do all of these, and you can find support and resistance lines in almost all of them. But guess what? There's a couple that are very uh, surefire, and this is one of them, in my opinion. That's why we go over it. That's why we go. That's why we go over the RSI and the MACD, right? This is and the trend lines and the chart patterns and the support and resistance levels and the Fibonacci. These are the most important. And best indicators, yes, we could do whatever the freak this is, okay? We could do all this stuff, right? We only do the most important stuff because if you do enough indicators, you can find whatever you want to do and have your confirmation bias. But if you look objectively, uh, you can find some really good information. But let's look at the moving average on the daily. 200-day exponential moving average is below 55 and the 15-day moving average. If you're confused on how I'm getting this information right there, that's where you want to go. But we have the golden cross uh, as far as both of those uh, relationships and intervals between them. Green flag, it checks out. Bullish territory, bullish sentiment. We're we're good to go as far as the EMA and the MA. Let's look at the MACD and the RSI daily road of strength index. Now, you may be wondering, all right, we had a fairly good run up, right? We're you know we we are breaking out. That looks pretty bullish, but you know we're still very inflated as far as where we were in December of last year. True, true. But I want you to show you. I want to show you something. Look at the RSI right here. If you were to buy in at uh, nine dollars here. When the RSI is 95, 95, and you held, you could have sold when you had more than a 2x, or you could have held all the way through and you're still up, you're basically up uh, as a 2x right now. So what does this mean? So that means if you bought in at 95, now, of course, the past is never necessarily indicative of the future. Remember that, that that's true for anything in life, right? History doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean anything necessarily. Nothing. There's too many variables for, to be sure in most things, at, at least as far as investing. Okay, I'll change that. Just as in mostly investing. But guys, last time we were at 95, you could have bought in there because this is such a great stock and because it's got such potential. We're not even at 95 right now. We're not even overbought right now. And we, I mean, we're, we're way okay. Yeah, the stock price is way higher than this. But guess what? RSI is looking fine, and it's much better buy right now than over here. Okay, no, technically you would want to buy here, right? Because it's lower. But as far as RSI, it's a better buy than it was here, and you would be sitting fine if you, you would be sitting very nice if you bought right here. That's lower than my current average. And you may be wondering, I only have forty-one shares. We will be going over uh, how my position is actually so low in my provision. We will be going over that in the current position section. Now, MACD daily MACD. All right, the signal line is about to cross over the MACD or across below the MACD line. That is going to be a bullish confirmation. That is a buy signal. Very important important one uh especially four hourly let's check this one out you don't want to just look at one indicator or one time frame nine one time frame on this one same thing so if we get a green day on monday it's going to be looking very good for microvision we're going to get we're going to, we have a breakout okay we have three things we have four things potentially we have a good week this week on as far as the nasdaq because of low uh not that many economic uh events uh so according to market watch at least right you know uh and they get that and that can change but we don't have many market events and like speeches and and uh inflation well we do have inflation coming up later in the week uh, a little bit of statistic core inflation but we don't have Powell, right? That's a big plus. At least, you know, you, usually I guess it is, right? It's risk that the market doesn't want, right? It's stability that the market uh, wants, and Powell is not stability. That's darn sure, right? Um, so we have the NASDAQ likely to go up, in my opinion. The technicals are bullish, and the economic calendar is bullish, in my opinion. Number two, we have uh, a breakout in the cup and handle. Number three, we have the four hourly MACD about to go up. And if we did, if we did uh, get that bullish confirmation, that's going to be some more bullish sentiment. And then number four, we have the daily confirmation that, of course, the daily, Mac the daily MACD is going to be more macroscopic and more delayed than the, than the four hourly. But still, if we get a green day, this could easily pop and we could get the bullish crossover. And that's a buy signal that a lot of people 
are going to are going to be watching and are going to be uh, making trades off of. So we could be looking very good. We could be looking very nicely. But watch the Nasdaq. That's the only thing with this one. Of course, we can get a news catalyst sending us to get delisted, right? I don't think so, in my opinion. But remember, when you invest in a stock, there's always a chance they can get delisted and you can lose literally all of your money. Not really, but you know, there's still technically a chance, you know, not a realistic chance, in my opinion, if you do decent research. But that's what we're looking at as far as Inside the charge of 7.77%. What does this actually mean, Brandon? How are they calculating this? All right, that's why I'm here for you. This is the total outstanding shares. 146 million. What does the shares outstanding mean? It means the total shares that the company has issued uh, in total. Insider shares, this is 11 million. This is how many shares of the total shares outstanding that insiders own. And out, out of the float, the float is what is available to public investors. Um, so that is uh, that is what we're looking. That's what all this stuff means, okay? And this is bullish, of course. This is seven percent is what you want to see. Anything above five percent is bullish, and anything. I mean, really, even a little lower than that is probably average, in my opinion, based on what I usually see. Institutional ownership, seventeen percent. I don't like institutional ownership very much. We're going to be going over why I don't like analysts over here, but for now, institutional ownership, partly, partly. Uh, institutional ownership is slightly bullish. If that's an indicator you like to use, that's fine. That's your opinion. That would be a very bullish uh, indicator if you were as bullish as I am with institutional ownership as I am with uh, insider ownership. I hope that made sense. Very complex stuff. Take notes. We were subtitles if you need to. I'll talk fast. I know. Short volume ratio. What does this mean, Brandon? Also, institutional ownership. Okay, this is pretty simple, right? I, uh, I'm gonna, I forgot to go over this. Okay, institutional shares is the same thing as uh, the other one. Essentially, this is uh, the percentage of the of the of the shares in the shares outstanding that institutions own share short volume ratio this does not necessarily mean that this is the amount of shares that shorts have that that, that uh, new short positions have been taken out uh that's not the total percentage of the of the shares outstanding no it's not okay this is the market volume that the shares that were traded this is the on the 19th right friday yesterday last day of trading this is the amount of short uh, about amount of shares that were traded in a short way uh, out of this. Okay, I hope that made sense. Another way to think of it is twenty five percent of these shares have been traded short. And what does traded short mean? That means that they either took up a new short position or bought back their shares and AKA covered their short position. If you're confused about this, I actually recommend. Well, whatever. We're not going to. We can do that some other time. I'm not going to say what I recommend. Go, go research how shorting works if you don't understand. Okay, uh, fact checking. If fact checking, this is with a you know get. We like to get multiple sources for our information. Insider ownership. They are undershooting it as far uh, compared to Fentel.io. Institutional ownership uh, checks out. Institutional transactions very bullish, obviously, but it's the three month change. So remember, that's not really. You know, that's nothing you want to pay too much too closely. You don't want to look too closely into that, in my opinion. Wall Street bets. All right, and Wall Street bets is our favorite subreddit, right, guys? Diamond hands. GameStop to the moon. Not really. Not really. I don't really like GameStop that much. I like the cause. But anyways, due diligence presentation, this is all you need to know. So all you need... Let's go how... Okay. Guys, this is a good This is a good one. Okay, I promise you. All right, let me upload this to, to show you, okay? Uh, this is a good one. A lot of good stuff in here. Read this. You know, yeah, it's long. Give it a skim, all right? You don't have to freaking... <laughs> read out loud like i don't know how to sweat yourself uh into reading every single freaking word just skim it you get an get an idea of the company if you don't already uh and there you go i'll link this for you you're welcome i'm gonna I, i'm linking everything i'm doing a thousand videos i'm doing patreon i'm doing everything all right y'all are welcome i hope you all appreciate this all right microvision isn't the second coming what i thought it was the second coming what published march 18th two days ago what will ashford ashworth who is this piece of crap this guy is a lying piece of garbage all right. So basically, this is a really negative article. One of the most negative. I think this is the most negative article I have ever seen about microvision. I'll link this for you if you want to cringe at this person's very, very naive and, uh, in my opinion, naive and rudimentary understanding of the company. I don't think this person knows how many products microvision owns and how many patents they have. Okay. Let's just pull up microvision, uh, microvision's website right now. Okay. Here we go. I just want to show you, okay, this person goes on to talk. I'm not going to go over all this. You can do that yourself. But essentially, he one of the points he makes in here, I, get, I gave this a skim. He says that uh, there's plenty of competition as far as the LiDAR technology. So therefore, Microvision's intrinsic value is much lower than what it uh, is orthodoxly 
supposed to be. All right, let me show you just let me just show you something, okay? Uh, let me, let's go with technology, okay? This is their intellectual property, right? These are their patents. Look at all the patents. Okay. They don't have just one product. They have all they have all this stuff. Okay, this is an insanely tech heavy company. They have a thousand things going on here. I, I don't even understand some of this stuff. Right? What the heck is this stuff? What the heck is this? Okay, I don't even understand all this stuff. All right. Now, if you do proper due diligence, you're going to understand most of this, and it, and most importantly, you're going to understand the lidar. In my opinion, that's what you need to know. That's the most important thing, in my opinion, which this person doesn't like. But anyways, guys. Uh, this company articles like this. Okay. Let's just go to the next point. All right. So that's, that's this. Let's just go to the next point because it ties in. Okay. Trust me, uh, regarding negative articles. Okay. People writing these articles are freelance writers. And of course, this is just some random person writing this. Everything you see in life is just some random person, random person, uh, saying or writing or, or whatever. Okay. That's all it is. People are all random. Except you know them, right? What's the chance you're going to know someone? Okay. But, uh, but, but the people writing these are writers. They are usually writing to make money from the companies they are writing for. Many times they have no stake in the company. If they really knew what they were talking about, they would spend less time writing BS and more time uh, vacationing and spending time on their yacht because they are genius predictions. <laughs> I didn't even read that far. Okay, that's actually totally true. Okay, if they really listen to this, listen to this point. Okay, if they really knew what they were talking about, they would spend less time writing BS and more time vacationing and spending time on their yacht because they're genius predictions, right? If they're so genius and if they if they have this whole they have this blog and they're so and they're so good, right? They say they have this whole website and this news outlet that they're writing for, right? Why are they spent? Why are they spending so much time just trying to dump a stock instead of? vacationing and spending time on their yacht because they should be rich presumably because they're so they're if they're so good at it just sh if you're so good at, at this prediction just short the stock and buy puts and put it online please i would love to watch your portfolio burn over the long term i would have an amazing time doing that in my opinion i can be wrong remember i can be wrong uh, but that would be amazing, guys. Come on. That, wouldn't that be great just to see this person short microvision? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But oh my gosh. You can't go short microvision. I, I want to see this person. I, I hope this person shorts microvision if the, if because the, this is this is blasphemy, in my opinion, what, what they're writing. Um, but a lot of what this person says is true, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah. I will link. I will link this. I will link this. And I will link this. All of these. Okay. You're welcome. Average monthly stock market return from 1980 to 2018 March. We're at the end of the March right now. We're at the we're at the two thirds point of March right we're on the 20th. One percent return to March. Right. What's the next month? What does that say? Okay, I can't actually highlight that. I wish I could. 1.51 percent, Brandon. That's good, isn't it? Yes, that's freaking good. That's the best month and year average historically from 1980 to, uh, to 2018. That's the best. Uh, we're about to, we're heading into the best month and guess what? The technicals look good. We just had an RSI cooldown. This is why I'm so bullish short term. This is why I'm so bullish short term, man. Uh, and of course I can be wrong and the NASDAQ can kill us all and literally ruin all of our, our lives short term and make us all cry. Literally. Yes, that can happen, but it's unlikely. And guess what? Over the long term, the NASDAQ can't do anything for us unless it can do that for it. The NASDAQ can kill us all actually like seriously in real life with a great depression that is true but that's not very realistic in my opinion and in pretty much every i i would say most people's opinion we're not getting a great depression anytime soon uh hopefully so we're heading into four great months four green months in a row so this is reason for me to be this is why i'm issuing so many buy alerts you know i'm on patreon you guys know if you're on the patreon shout out to the patrons all right you guys know i'm very bullish right now all right we just got a correction man you should be loading up on the dips if you can and of course it's good to keep some buying power i have plenty of buying but this is more buying power than i usually have uh right now and this is just because uh you know i am a little scared because i'm scared long time very scared long term or or medium term i should say medium term uh, like a couple next couple years to decade, yeah, no, not decade, but next couple years, the five to six, seven years, I'm very scared for the markets. But uh, but short term, I'm very bullish, and we we don't need to get into why I'm bull, why I'm uh, bearish long term or medium term. I guess I mean not really, not necessarily bearish, just not as bullish as I am short term, right? Okay. This is another reason why I'm bullish. Uh, long, uh, short term, short term. Excuse me. Economic calendar, market watch. Okay. We don't have much much PR coming in, much uh, much statistics. Many, you know, we do have. Uh, this is something to watch, guys. Get in on Bitcoin now. Get in on Bitcoin now. This is going to be very interesting. Okay, now 
we don't have as many insane things as we had last week. Okay, why do I say that? Literally solely because we had a lot more things last week, especially on Tuesday. Holy crap, look at how many things there were. But mostly just because this guy right here is not going to be speaking next week. Let's go. We don't have to be scared of Powell crashing the markets or, you know, saving the markets by by literally solely just holding the markets, you know, in his hand. Literally when he was speaking last week, he was literally holding the markets in his hand, literally just able to drop them at any time if he wanted to and just say, nope, your money is not your money anymore but yeah um so next week is looking good next week right now paolo is not speaking uh so we're looking we're looking not that bad right Paolo now speaking is typically a good thing the market likes stability the market does not like surprises the market wants the less of these things the better that is the market's mindset I'm, that's that's pretty factual okay that's not really debatable i think in my mind at least current positions i told you earlier whoa that's way too zoomed in okay working all right okay let's go ahead and zoom out here if google sheets can stop screwing around all right there we go there we go okay uh firstly let's go over the price targets eight percent price targets already been hit it's already been hit all right i'm not saying i'm a genius all right i'm not saying of course, I'm not saying I'm a genius, okay? I'm not, I'm not a genius. I'm not a genius, okay? But I, I am good on my price targets historically. And when I say historical, I just mean last month, okay? I don't have – that's when I started, okay? I'm not hiding something from you. Go back. My first video, literally the first video that started it all, that started this multi-million dollar business, it will be, in my opinion, I think in my mind it will be pretty soon, sooner than sooner than later, sooner rather than later. But uh, but we do have – this is my first video that I did, literally detailing these price targets and my – my uh, exact end of year bear and bull cases. And now uh, these are my new price targets for April 7th. We've already hit a lot of them. We've hit microvision out of the park. We've already hit it. End of your bear case 30, end of your bull case 60 to 150. That's what we're talking about. Now, why did I sell microvision? Mostly uh, for one reason. This bad boy right here, skill. I needed money for skills, honestly. And skills, the skills is not marginable, so I had to sell a lot of other things. And obviously, you know, it was it was such a high probability trade, in my opinion. And it's got so much room to run. This is actually a good long term play, in my opinion. Um, it really is, and it's not. It's it's in a it's in a completely different space than tech. I mean, yeah, it is technically tech. It is literally like a gaming platform. I guess that's kind of techy, but it's not. It's not anywhere near Microvision or Bio Nano level tech. Right, it's definitely not following the Nasdaq as Microvision is, and they have gotten beat down like an insane amount. But I'm still super bullish on Microvision. Yeah, I sold a little bit. I, I don't want to add anything because my average price looks so sweet right now. But I will be adding on the dips. Uh, but I'll probably just be holding. I'll probably just be holding Microvision. I might I might add a little on the breakout if we do get some more uh, bullish confirmation. If we do break this uh, 38.2 percent retracement level, that's an entry point. Once we confirm it. Oh, yeah, by the way, by the way, I want to talk about something real quick. I know this video is long. Okay, I'm going to try to be quick here. But I did sell when I actually sold. I want to tell you a quick lesson, okay? I timed this perfectly. How did I time it perfectly, Brandon? Why are you bragging so much today, man? What's wrong with you? You're getting arrogant lately, all right? It's actually true, okay? I don't like being arrogant, but sometimes when you do something good, you just have to tell the truth, right? I didn't even time it perfectly. I sold right on this 38.2% retracement level because I saw we were getting rejected, and I saw the NASDAQ not doing too good. We were already up a lot on the day. Let's see what Microvision did on the day. Yeah, we were already up 10. Yeah, I saw when it was up like 10% on the day. NASDAQ was da was up, you know, one, not even 1% on the day. So I knew there was a very low chance of us actually confirming the breakout. So I took us, I, I sold like, I don't know, I sold like 20 shares or I think it was like, it was 19 or 20 shares, I believe. So yeah, I sold right there. Could have re-entered lower on this on the support here, right? I had it drawn up. We have these stuff. That's why technicals are so good. But anyways, this isn't going to get any views because the impressions click through rate is going to be so bad because everyone clicks off before it's done. Relevant information in regards to the title is finished now. Feel free to click off. If you have more important things to do, this is part of do stuff. Most of you to be doing the first five seconds. Merch slash Patreon. Go check out that link if you're interested. BrandonWallSeal.com. That's where you, where you want to send your serious suggestions or questions. We will go check out that link below. Our business model is never going to change. Buy on it to the moon. Execute order 66. Palpatine, Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, best Star Wars ever, in my opinion. If you disagree, you are wrong. No, I'm kidding. This is not financial advice. Thank you all so much. I'll see you on the next one.